God bless you, my dear. We are here again on the way of salvation program. I thank God for this opportunity to share his word with you again. I was talking about how to find a good shepherd in the last episode. And I'm sure by now you know who the good one is. Never follow someone who will not develop a personal relationship with you. I was listening to a woman who said she went to a church for 10 years, 10 good years, and never had the opportunity to meet the pastor. This is very strange. 10 years, she never had the opportunity to see the pastor. So find someone who can know you by name and pray for you. That one who can be a strong spiritual dog so, so that he can intercede for you when you are asleep or when you are under attack. So those were the things I shared in the other episode. I hope it will help you and your eyes will open for you to see that this person is a strong spiritual dog who can be a shepherd over my life so that you can be safe spiritually. Amen. Today I want to look at another thing. Today I want to look at demons and deception. Demons and deception. And before we proceed, let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 24, verse number 4. Jesus was talking to the disciples when they asked him of the signs of the end times. And this is the first answer that came from his mouth. He said, take heed that no one deceives you. Take heed that no one deceives you. You see, the Lord knows that demons are very crafty. They are very cunning. As, uh, as the Bible puts it in Genesis chapter 3, that they use their crafty schemes to deceive Adam and Eve. They are still about the same business. Same about crafty schemes. They are using crafty schemes to deceive the ignorant. So you have to be smart. That is why the Lord said, you have to take heed that no one deceives you. Demons have set up, have set up deceptive schemes. And like, as I've been saying, as I've been saying, they don't want you to be with God. So they will do everything to deceive you. All that they are doing is deception. The reality is there. When we talk about deception, deception is producing something which is not the original. Simple. That is the deception. Producing something to deceive the, the buyer as if it is the original. But it's, it's not. That is the deception. The, the demons are very well in. They are very well in deceiving people. So they are doing all these things. But it is very sad that people are not smart at all to detect their deceptive ways. That is what the Lord wants us to share this part. So that you can be very much enlightened about their deception. Lord said, you should be careful. So, I always say, if someone wants to go around to deceive people, he has already planned what he's going to do. He, he sits down to plan what he's going to do so that you will not see the crafty ways of his things. It is exactly so. Demons know that human beings are very naive. 
especially those who hold Bible. It is very sad. There's something the Lord said, and that scripture always disturbs me. And what the Lord said is true, because he knows men. He said, the children of the darkness, the children of darkness are more wiser than the children of the light. It is very sad. How can you hold Bible and be gullible? How can you hold Bible and be gullible? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be at all. You see? So I hope this episode will take you out of your naivety so that you can sit up and not be deceived by demons. Now, for demons to deceive mankind, they know that the best place, the best way to deceive is to, is to let people uh, come, is to talk about religion and church, so to speak. I've dealt extensively in this subject in my book. So please, all that I'm sharing here is not in the book. So try, do your best, purchase the book, read it, and as I said the other time, if you need prayer, send me mail, come to me, and I'll pray for you free of charge. You see, we don't sell anything in action power. We just preach and pray for people free of charge. I hate demons. I hate them. I don't like them. Because they are the ones making it difficult for people to serve God. So I've dealt extensively on this subject in my book. So read it. You will know more about that. So what I'm saying is that when you talk about church, demons know that, oh, people who may even think, oh, I will not go to visit a fudu man. I will not go to visit a fetish priest as uh, in other parlance. But if I go to church, then I'm safe. So they know people think, they know the, the, the thoughts of people that, hey, if I'm in church, I'm safe. It's not true at all. It's not true. For them to deceive people, one of the interesting and very powerful entity that demons have set up is called church. They have their churches too, if you don't know. You see, if other religions are there, you think they are the ones that are so uh, obvious that, oh, they are not Christians. But you will be shocked that some of the places you call church are demonic centers. And that such places are built, are established to deceive you. That is why the Lord said you should be careful. You should sit up that no one deceives you. So when he said that, let's hear what the Lord also said in Matthew chapter 24. After the carefulness, listen to what the Lord said in Matthew 24 verse 11. He said, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Then, many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. I didn't write this. He didn't say many false pastors. He didn't say many false evangelists. One person who is in trouble here is a prophet. I have the prophetic gift too. But listen, I'm a minister who ministers in prophecy too. But prophecy has gained notoriety in this world now. It is prophecy, prophetic gift, a prophetic ministry that is causing a lot of trouble in the churches of God today. And the Lord prophesied about it. The Lord prophesied about it. So if you are talking about deception, the Lord said you should be careful of false prophets. Be very careful. Because the demons have set up their churches, put their false prophets on, so that over, put their, their false prophets over, in order to deceive the ignorant. So you should be very careful. If, if, if they want to deceive you, they will deceive you easily with the word church. So anywhere you go, 
that these demonic uh, uh, people have set up churches. Whatever they do there, why is deception is that whatever they do there cannot bring you to God. Simple. Whatever they do there, I call it problem solving centers. That's what I call it. It is P S C, problem solving center. It's not God. Hey, they, some of them come and say, "Hey, if you if you if you are a trader, if you are a business person, businessman, and your business is not going on, come and see me. If you want to travel abroad, come and see me. If you need a child, come and see me. If you pray for people and these things are solved, you didn't help them to go to heaven. It didn't help. So they are only solving problems. Only the weak, the vulnerable, and the one." Who doesn't want to go to heaven will be at such places. Go to the place where you are being taught how to live holy. My emphasis in the, is on the word holy because the one who called me is holy. Without that word, nobody can see God. So they are deceiving people with solving problems. All that, what is also interesting is that their prophecies centers on the individual. It centers on the individual. They hardly talk about you, this sister. I've seen that you are living in sin. This, this. Mm. One demon told me, but we are we going to heaven that we will also tell you to come to go to heaven with us. <laughs> he said, we are not going to heaven. We have no place to go. So how will we set up a church? <coughs> Excuse me. How will we set up a church? And teach people to go to be with that man. That's what they said. So it's never true. That if you follow a false prophet. You can see God. If you enter that place. And the whole entity. Is under the control. Under the power. Under the dominion. Of demons. You are part of it. Your name is written. In the demonic book. So be careful of the deception. Be very very careful. Why? Why many false prophets have hijacked the church is that the true ones are lazy. Very lazy. They don't like prayer. You say you are a pastor, but look at our Lord. He prayed the whole night. One thing I've learned from my Lord is that he was a praying man. He prayed. So if you say God called you and you, you don't pray, some of them even don't, they don't like prayer meetings. Eh? Because of these lazy pastors, the, the, the church people also have needs. That is why they go to these false prophets. But if you, as the true man of God, will pray and not sleep at night and not only talking to people and solve their, and cast out demons from their lives, they will not visit these false prophets. They are springing up because of the weak ones, because of the fake, also the bad ones who are pastoring. So that is what you should understand. So in these churches, they, they, they set up churches and some of the things they say is to confuse the ignorant and, and let them lose their salvation. Block them from living for Jesus. And when they, they set up these churches, I want, to, I want us to look at some of the controversial things they teach people. Very interesting. Some of the things they teach people. The first thing that they do is to deny. Is to deny the story of Jesus. They deny. Some, some demonic people even say the story of Jesus is not true. It is very funny. Go to Israel. Go to Israel. And see the physical proof that a man called Jesus lived on the face of this earth. He died, he was buried, and on the third day he rose again. His tomb is dead for people to see now. So, how dare you say that that story is not true? You are a demonic person if you say that. Demons have hired some people to teach false doctrine. These are some of the things they talk about. The story of Jesus is not true. And do you know what is funny? 
Mm. They use the Bible. They talk about Bible. They talk. About, they talk from the Bible and <laughs> speak against Jesus. That is very very funny. <laughs> oh my God! How do you talk about Bible? How do you talk from Bible and speak against Jesus? Let me let me tell you something, Church. This book, this Bible, does not denigrate Jesus. This book it does not denigrate Jesus. This book exalts him. From this book, you will see who Jesus is. That he is truly the Messiah. That he is truly God. He is truly human. That he is truly the Lord God. The Son of Man. This book exalts him. This book does not bring him down. This book. Read this book. Even if you said you found mistakes here. Compare the mistakes you found with the, with the, with the, the, the other one, scriptures. If you don't understand, don't confuse people. And please, any church you go to, that the subject of Jesus is debatable. Run. Run. You cannot hold this book and talk against Jesus. It is not possible. It is very funny if you hold this book and say you are talking about Jesus. You are speaking against Jesus. Hold another book. Go and pick another book. But not this one. This one exalts him. If you don't know. There's no way this book brings Jesus down. It lifts him up. You see. So people are very funny. Such things can only deceive the baby in Christ. And the ignorant. There's no way. There's no way you can speak against Jesus. If you say. You are called by him. It is very funny. Very, very funny. If you, if you, if, how can you say you love cars? You cannot say you love cars. Especially Mercedes Benz. And you speak against car Benz. Car Benz. You cannot speak against him. Because he is the first person to manufacture automobiles. You see? You cannot speak against Jesus if you say you, you are a pastor. The, the most funny thing is you call what you are doing church. Eh? You call what you are doing church. If it's church, it's a Jesus who brought up the church. He said, I will build my church. And the gates cannot, the gates of hell cannot prevail. He brought about that word church. So if you are calling what you are doing church and speaking against Jesus, it is obvious that what you are doing is not church. It is something else. It is something else. You see, you are betraying yourself. Sometimes they think they are smart, but in, 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 in their own talk, you can see the foolishness. You see, if you hold this book and you call what you are doing church, you call it church, you have written church, you wrote church in front of the building, you have put yourself in big trouble because he is the one who brought about church. Nobody can hold this book and talk against Jesus. Even in other religions, they don't speak against Jesus. There's no one who can hold this book and speak against Jesus. Other religions don't talk about, don't talk against Jesus. You see? So if you if you are holding this book, calling what you are doing church, and you speak against him, you are doing something else. How can you say this is American embassy? This place is called American Embassy. But I, I hate Americans. How can you say that? Or That is only an example. How can you say this is a, a Dutch Embassy, but I hate Dutch people? How can you say this is Ghana Embassy, but I hate the Ghana president? You can't say that. Because he appointed you. He put you there. You see? So it is deception. You cannot say that. That is wrong. That is why you should be alert that anyone who says he doesn't believe the story of Jesus. Some even say that Jesus is not the only way to heaven. If you hold Bible and you say that, you are disagreeing with his own word. And how can you disagree with someone you said he called you? And you said you are, you are, you are talking to people about it. He himself said, I am the way. 
the truth and the life. He said that. So if you say there's, there are many ways, you don't agree with him. So it means what you are doing, you have packed people to deceive them. You are deceiving people by your own words. You betrayed yourself. If you don't agree with what the man called Jesus said, and you say you are building a church, you are deceiving people. The name church is there for nothing. It's a demonic place. Somebody even said, he throws a challenge to Jesus. But he, as, afterwards he said, but I will help people in the name of Jesus. My God, this is madness. It's madness. How can you challenge the Lord and say, I'm helping, I'm help, helping people in his name? Come to think of it. These are the small, small demonic deceptive teachings. Please, don't compromise on the name Jesus. If you call it church, I'm saying it again. This book from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it does not denigrate Jesus. It lifts him up as the son of God. This book says is the one coming to judge the living and the dead. Except you don't believe this book. I don't have any problem with you. Belief or faith is a choice. Some people say I don't believe. I don't have any problem. But if you hold this book and speak against Jesus, you are in big trouble. Number one, you don't agree with him. You are in trouble. Number two, you are deceiving people as if it's church. Whereas this is not church, you are also in trouble. When some people spoke as if he was deceiving people in his presence, when they spoke as if he was deceiving people and they said he was casting out demons from the power of from the chief demon called Bazibu, the Lord said, warn them. He said, you should be careful. Any sin that the man commits can be forgiven. But if you speak against the Holy Spirit, he said, that sin cannot be forgiven. You see, that was his presence. When he's gone now, Apostle Paul said in the book of Galatians chapter 1, he says, if anyone talks about any Jesus, another Jesus, apart from the Jesus in this book, the person will be accursed. So please, be careful. Now, you are talking about Jesus and you say his church. When you die, you'll be shocked. You'll meet the same man. A man of God also said, Jesus said he's the dog. You see, they, they are deceiving people with this small, small thing. Jesus said he's the dog. But if I'm going into a building, what, what, what do I need a door for? The door is nothing to me. I only need to be in the, in the building. That man was also speaking against Jesus. These are the small, small demonic deceptive doctrines. Please. If you want to be a Christian, Jesus is the one who brought about Christianity. That is why we call these people Christians. He is the one who brought about church. And from this book we speak. If you don't believe, put the book aside. Go and pick another book. You have every choice to believe in other religion. My point is simple. You are guilty. You are guilty to call the place church. Hold this book and speak against the one who brought about it. Buddhists don't do that. A Buddhist would never speak against Buddha. A Muslim would never speak against Muhammad. They have respect for the one who brought about their religion. So if you say you are a Christian, and you are doing this to your own Lord, you are in big trouble. Repent. And to you, the church member, don't believe these teachings. Don't believe them. Because... Jesus is the one who saved you. So wherever you go, the demons are teaching different doctrines and deceiving people are saying, Jesus is a liar. Okay. What if you are wrong? Fine, you are talking. But my question is this. What if you are wrong? Do you know the consequences? If you are right, I have no problem. But I want to ask you a question. What if you are wrong? And you die and come and meet Jesus and you ask him, you were the one saying I was a liar. Hey, how would you answer? How would you answer? So please be careful. I said you have every right to believe any other thing. 
But if you say you are calling a church to deceive people, you are in big trouble. To deceive people in someone's name. If I go around decei uh, deceiving people in the name of a president, they will charge me for fraud. So if you are also deceiving people in the name of Jesus, imagine the trouble that awaits you. So you as a church member, let your eyes open. May God speak to you through this word. That demons will not deceive you through their churches and through their false teachers and false prophets. I will deal with these subjects next time. May God help you and establish you until next time. I don't want you to go to hell. All that I'm saying is that I hate hell. I hate demons. Live holy and let us go to heaven. God bless you. I will see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.